Good morning, everyone, and welcome to your Getting Started training for Into Reading Texas. My name is Sarah Carroll, and I am a consultant with HMH. I am so excited to be here with you today and talk all about Into Reading Texas. We are going to spend our time together focusing on the assessment portion of Into Reading Texas and look at all of um, the assessment features and how they will benefit you and your students. The assessment suite provided by Into Reading Texas helps you to predict, monitor, and accelerate student growth. And in today's portion of the training, we are going to focus on um, diving deeper into what these assessments look like. We will spend some time logging on to Edge, your friend in learning, and looking at how to locate and assign these assessments in Ed. And then we will also spend some time um, viewing the reports once your students have completed the assessment and also um, talking about how to analyze the data. So before we begin, let's take a look at how the Into Reading Assessment Suite allows you to adjust instruction, resources, and student grouping. You can follow along as we talk about this in your PLG on page 110. So looking at this image, you will see on the left that we have an, um, numerous ways in which you can collect data on your students. We have selection quizzes, weekly assessments, and module assessments. And when you assign these in Ed and your students take these assessments online, Ed takes the data and gives recommendations um, on how to uh, change your instruction and help you make instructional decisions. Um, it gives you recommendations on student grouping and recommendations on resources um, for reteaching or extending learning, if that is the case. So great tool if you choose to um, assign assessments online. Now in your PLG on page 111, you will see a table that looks very similar to this one here. Formative assessment uh, provides feedback on how students are doing on um, meeting specific learning objectives. And those assessments will be things like correct and redirect, weekly assessments, selection and level reader quizzes, and a couple other things that we will spend some time looking at and, and delving into deeper in just a moment. Now the summative assessments, such as the module assessment, will assess how the student has performed on a variety of skills um, and how they have mastered those skills throughout the module. So before we go any further, let's take a moment to think about your district or your school's current assessment plan. How do you think that the assessments provided by Into Reading Texas will fit in um, or align with your district's current assessment plan? So let's think about that. Just think about that for a minute. How do you think these assessments will match or fit into what your district already has lined up for assessment? And you can jot your thoughts um, to this question on uh, page 110 in your PLG. And after you've taken some time to jot down those thoughts, uh, let's take a minute and share with our elbow partner what you think about these assessments from Into Reading Texas and your district assessment plan and how those two might line up. All right, let's move on in our PLG to page 112 and 113. You will see the assessment calendar. And this is just a guideline um, from Into Reading Texas on when you might want to administer these assessments. Um, just a, a basis to um, go off of when you are planning. Let's go ahead and grab a sticky note, make a little tab, and let's have these pages in your PLG just so that when you are planning, um, and after you have learned more about the assessment, you are able to come back here and um, use this as a reference um, and make some notes about when you will want to plan those assessments. Now let's take a deeper look at some of the Into Reading Texas assessments that you have at your fingertips. You can follow along in your PLG beginning on page 114. 
So the first thing we're going to look at is the HMH growth measure. And it is a summative assessment that tracks progress over the year, and it um, provides the, de the data in a like file score. So you can use this um, assessment to um, group your, or to create your initial reading groups at the beginning of the year. You can also um, give this assessment online. So Ed's going to provide that data for you in a very tangible, um, easy way to manipulate it and group those students. So a great resource for you. All right, let's talk a little bit about formative assessments. There's a couple that we are going to um, go over together. So formative assessments monitor student learning and help you as a teacher adjust your instruction to meet your students' needs the best way you can. So let's talk about what some of the NT Reading Texas formative assessments look like. The first one you see here is called Correct and Redirect. And these prompts you will find all throughout your teacher's guide. And teachers often note when they are working with students um, which students require the most support by using these prompts. And it's a great way just to quickly check in and then make note of what students are going to need additional instructional support later during small group time. So a great tool that you have. Next, let's take a look at three different assessments that measure student progress. All three of these assessments can be assigned directly from Ed online, or you can also print them out and use them with pen and paper if that's something you're more comfortable with. So the first one is the weekly assessment. So this assessment consists of 10 to 15 questions, depending on the grade level. The weekly assessment will test your students on foundational skills, comprehension and grammar, things that they have learned that week. Um, the week at a glance page in your teacher's guide will give you an overview of what is going to be covered in the weekly assessment. A super cool feature, if you choose to give this assessment online using Edge or Friends in Learning, you can actually deselect test items um, that if you feel like they are over skills that you did not teach that week. You can, can remove them from the test if you don't want to test your students on that skill just yet. Another one is the selection quiz. This selection quiz is meant to be administered after the very first read of the selection in the student my book. It simply tests the comprehension of the selection. And when you administer this selection quiz online, Ed will actually use the data um, to provide you information on how to group your students, um, specifically those students that need additional support with comprehension. Um, and then we also have the level reader quizzes, which are five multiple choice questions that will test the comprehension of that leveled reader. And again, that can be assessed online or in print. And finally, you might want to consider having your students complete the performance task. Another great way to, for them to demonstrate what they have learned throughout the module. Uh, at the very beginning, the welcome to the module section of your teacher's guide, it will include a performance task that actually is directly aligned with the essential question of the module. So just another great way to assess and monitor what your kiddos are learning. All right, let's talk about the guided reading benchmark assessment. This tool uh, will be a great way for you to measure and determine your students' independent and instructional reading level. This kit is available in print, or you can also log on to Ed and print the PDF version. Students can actually complete the comprehension check for this assessment online, and there is an evaluation guide that gives you some guidelines on how to correctly assess, correctly use this assessment to make sure you're getting the most accurate data. There is a primary kit that includes levels A through N, and it has 14 level readers, and there's an intermediate kit, levels J through W, with 14 and 14 leveled readers as well. All right, so now that we have reviewed the different types of NT Reading Texas assessments, let's take a look at where you will find the print and digital assessments on it. So I'm going to switch over to my Ed account. 
Okay. So here we have my home screen. You see that I, the program I am currently using is the NT Reading Kindergarten class, kindergarten program. Um, and let's talk about how you might um, assign your students an assessment using Ed. So let's say that I am in module two. There are a couple ways I can access the assessments and I'll show you both. So if you are on this home screen, you scroll down to the bottom and you see the word resources here, there are lots of different options. I'm going to click on assessment. All right, and then there's a couple ways that I can filter the results. So I am specifically looking for module two assessments. Over here on the left, I can choose to filter just module two. And all of the assessments available or any resource about assessments will pop up for module two. Now to distinguish between which one is an online resource and which one is a print resource, pretty simple. You will see if it's an online resource, you will see the words online assessments right here at the top. And then you will also see this little assign button over on the right hand side. And that lets you know that you can assign that directly from Ed to your students. The print assessments will not have that assign button. Um, you will just see that it says module assessments there. So that is another uh, just a little quick tip for you. You can also sort these over here by component. If I want to look just as online, I can click online and only the online assessments pop up. So let's say that at the end of the module, I want to give my students the module two assessment and see how did they master the skills in this module. So let's assign it to my class. I'm going to click on the assign button. Okay. So there's a title, I can change this if I like. I think I would rather it say something about module two, just, just so I don't forget. So I'm gonna add in here module two assessment. Now I pick the start date, when do I want this assessment to begin? When do I want my, my kiddos to have access to this? I'm gonna say today, and let's say I want this due by Friday. That's the last day they have access to it. And then directions, anything I think they might need to know um, to complete the test, I can give them some additional directions here. All right, over on the right, let's pick the students who are getting this assessment. So here is my class. I can click the drop down arrow and see all of my students. And I want to assign this to all of them. So I will make sure they are all checked. And then I will click the assign button. All right, and then here we have it. All of my kiddos have been assigned that. To double check, I can click on the assess assignment button at the top and I will see here that I have this assessment um, ready to go for my class. Okay, the other way that you can access the assessment, let's go back to uh, my Discover page, my home screen here, and I can click directly on module two. Okay, and I can scroll down and click on View Resources. And again, I'm gonna filter just so I see uh, just what I'm looking for, not all these extra things right, right now. So I'm gonna click on Components, and I am looking just for online assessments, and here we have it. Same thing, so two easy ways to find exactly what you are looking for. So now that we have looked at both of those ways, let's give it a try. So everybody go ahead and grab your computer. We are going to log on to Ed. And I think we should all try to assign the module two online assessment to our class. So once you have done that, you can double check that you were successful by clicking assignments at the top and you should see right here that it says module two assessment, have your number of kiddos right here, and you'll be ready to go. So let's all try that, assigning the module two assessment online. Okay, now that we have successfully learned how to give our first assessment, let's um, turn our PLGs to page 117, and let's 
um, spend a few minutes working on this exploring assessment table. So you can work with somebody at your table to fill in the table. Um, comparing the print and digital versions of the assessment. And after you've completed the table, put a star next to the assessment that you would like to spend some more time after today's training diving deeper into and, and learning a little bit more about. Which one do you think might be most beneficial for you in your particular classroom? And also, when you are ready to dive deeper into assessments and learn everything there is to know, you can access the assessment professional learning module on ED. And you can also return to your PLG for guidance on that assessment calendar and looking when to schedule those assessments. Okay, so we've talked about how to give assignments on ED. Let's go over a few other tools that you will need to know about. So if you are um, still having questions about how to give assignments, if you like to need a little refresher, you can use the help feature. So at the top of your screen where it says welcome, you can click on that drop down menu, click on help, and then you can type here like a Google search, you know, what are you needing help with? And let's say you need help with assessments. You can type assessments here. And there are 29 resources all about assessments. Um, let's say you want to use this site over here, you can just click on assignments and it, it just um, walks you through everything you need to know about assignments, the same things that we just talked about. Also, in your PLG on page 115, there is a QR code and that will give you quick access to information about creating and assigning assignments on ED. So let's take a minute, grab a sticky note, make a little tab, Maybe jot on their um, assessment or assignment help. And let's put that in our PLD so that you can remember to come back to this QR code and scan that, quickly get to the, the information you need if you are needing assistance with assessment. Okay, another great feature in Ed that I'm excited to show you about is the grouping feature. So, Back at the my on my ed my main ed screen at the top here on the far right I see the word group. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to create some groups. I have my beginning of your data, and I'm ready to move my kiddos around. So let's get started. All right, I'm going to. This is the very beginning of the year, so I'm going to call this group beginning of year reading group. And over here, I have all of my students and I am ready to move them around. It's super simple. All you do is touch on their name, click and drag it to the group that you would like them to be in. I'm gonna quickly assign all these kiddos a group. And actually today, I have a very small class, so I'm only gonna use two groups. I'm gonna click on these three little dots, delete this third group. And then let's say that I don't like the names group one and group two. I wanna mix it up. Um, maybe I have a candy theme in my classroom, and I would like for this to be the M&M group. And I would like for this group to be the Skittles group. Okay, super simple, easy to do. When I have done all of my editing and adjusting, I just click Save and Done. And there it is, my beginning of your reading group. Now let's say I need to make a change. All you do is click on these three dots. Click edit and I'm back in the screen. I can move somebody over if I need to. So very easy to use and a great tool. And then just make sure to click save and done. Okay, something else that I can't wait to show you is how to create a plan um, to keep all of your resources in one easy to access place. So at the very top of your screen, again, we've looked at discover already, we looked at assignments. Let's go to create. All right, and I'm going to create a plan um, to, let's say, for module two, week two. I am starting to think about, you know, what my week's going to look like and what resources I might want to pull for my kiddos. And instead of having to go search for them, I can have them all in one place, easy to print, easy to assign. It's fabulous. So let's create a new plan for module two, week two. 
the goals of this plan are to keep resources for week two. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and create. We're gonna save and continue. Okay, and now that I've created the plan, I can go back to Discover and I can search for resources, add them to my plan and they'll all be in one place. So let me show you how to do that. Let's go to Discover. Let's go back here to Module 2. And I am specifically looking at Week 2. Let's click on that and let's click View Resources. Okay, so here is everything that I um, have available for Week 2. And I know for sure that I am going to want to use this principle SAM in my lesson. I've already opened it. I know it's something I really would like for my students. So I want to have easy access to it next week when I need to pull this out and print it for them. So we are going to click on Add to Plan, and we're going to select the plan that will use this resource, so Module 2, Week 2. If I am wanting to put it in more than one plan, you can click More Than One, as many as you need. I just want this one for Module 2, Week 2, and then click Add. Okay, successfully added. Now let's, let me show you where you can find these now that we've added them to our plan. Uh, let's go back to create. Here I have my, my two plans. I'm currently working on this module two, week two. Let's click on that. And then here we have our printable SAM. Um, easy to access, easy to locate. I don't have to go hunting for anything. It's all right here, everything I need for week two. So a fabulous tool when you are creating your lesson plans. Pick out the resources you want, make a new plan for that week, and then when you're ready to print, they're all right here at your fingertips. So it is a really great resource, very easy to use, very user-friendly, um, that I think will really enhance your learning experience this year. All right, so once your students have completed all of these assessments and assignments and ed, you're going to want to review some of the reports that you have available. So let's, let me get, here we go. So let's talk about some of the different reports that you will be able to utilize. Um, if you wanna go ahead and fit, uh, Follow along with me in your PLG. It's going to be on page 118 and 119. There's a summary of all these reports listed there on page 118. All right, so the assessment report provides a summary of the student and the class performance on different assessments. And from there, you can click on individual assessments to get individual test items and review student performance on those individual assessments. The standards report gives a review of performance on specific standards. And from this report, you can actually review recommendations for instruction aligned to those standards. If you are wanting to reteach or maybe extend learning in an area where your class did really well, you can um, access those resources right from this report. Okay, so before we go any further and looking at the assessment report, let's go ahead and flag page 120 and 121 in your PLG. So grab a sticky note, let's jot report for report options, different reports on there, add that tag to your PLG so that you can come back to this at a later time when you um, need to review the different report options. All right, and today we're gonna focus on the assessment report which you will be able to access through the Data and Reports tab on Ed. It was right between um, assess assignments and groups, so Data and Reports. So you can click on that. This assessment will populate once your students have completed an assessment. So let's take some time and delve into what are all the different features of this report are. So the very first thing you'll want to know is at the very top of the screen, you can um, click on your class and the drop down menu will give you all of your classes that you have registered in Ed. So if you are wanting to toggle between a, um, two different classes, you can change the class view there. The reports tab allows you to um, toggle between the assessment report and the 
standards report. So at the top of your screen where it says assessment and standards, you can click on those to go back and forth if you so wish. At the top right of your screen, that blue button that says export CSV, if you click on that, it will ex export this data into a comma separated value file like an Excel file if you wish to view your data that way. The assessment proficiency. This is over here, this little circle feature on the left. This gives cumulative score levels for all students that were assigned to that assessment. And you will notice there are many different colors on that little circle, and they are color coded by student scores. So the green is for students who scored anywhere from 80 to 100 on the assessment. Yellow is 65 to 79%. Red is 0 to 64%. And then gray is for students that there is no data for the assessment. And you can click on the individual um, or on the score level to view individual student scores for that level and for that assessment. All right, right next to that, you will see the assessment average. And this shows the class average for each assigned assessment. And you can click on an assessment um, to view more information over it um, to give you more, more a more detailed view. All right, assessment performance. This is going to be on the bottom at the left. This displays um, reporting information for all students, and it shows cumulative assessment scores for each student and single test scores for students. So the column on the far left is going to be the student's cumulative assessment average, and then every other column next to it, the gray columns, will be the, their individual scores on the different assessments. So you can um, click on the individual assessments to see more information about that assessment, like student responses and things like that. So after your students have completed their very first assessment on ed, you can return to this section in your PLG to review how to interpret this report, because there is a lot of information here. So on page 118 in your PLG, you can actually scan that QR code and it will take you right back to the resource that online that will help you remember how to interpret this report. And as always, you can refer to the professional learning module on ed for more information about assessments and reports. It's a great resource there. All right, so before we go any further, let's take a moment to think about all that we have learned about assessments and reports. So with your table partners, well, hold on, let's think about it first. Let's think about this prompt, this sentence stem individually. The sentence says, I will use data from the assessment report too. So let's think about how is this data gonna be useful to you in your classroom? What are some things you might do with this data? Okay, once you have your thoughts together, if you want to jot your response in your PLG on page 121, how this data is going to be useful to you. And once you've jotted that, if you will share with somebody at your table, maybe they have thought of something that you didn't think of, a way that might be helpful to you. All right, I'm hearing a couple of similar things being shared out. It sounds like some people are going to use this data to help their students pick the just right level text for independent reading time. It sounds like some people are going to use this to group their students. Some are going to use it for conferencing. Some might use this data for reteaching lessons. Lots of ways that this data will be really helpful for you and really beneficial for you in your classroom. All right, that's all we have for assessments. Let's go on to our next section.